All right. Well, joining us today to talk about common swimming injuries is DMC primary care sports medicine physician, Britta Anderson. Now, as a primary care sports medicine physician, Dr. Anderson manages non-operative musculoskeletal issues for adolescents and adults. She is also team physician for the Detroit Tigers. She specializes in non-orthopedic medicine, focusing on interventional procedures, injury prevention, treatment, and rehabilitation. All that meaning she's good at her job. And we're happy that you are here uh, to speak to our audience. Now, uh, our audience uh, for this particular show is uh, swimming and swimmers. And so uh, our podcast, you know, uh, delves across uh, everything happening in the swimming world here in the state of Michigan, the high school swimming world. And uh, obviously uh, a very rigorous sport. And uh, sometimes uh, we do see injuries. And this is kind of the part of the season where they've been grinding it out for, you know, six to seven weeks. And and they're now getting ready for the stretch run and uh, need to try and stay as healthy as they can so that uh, they can perform the best they can. Uh, But in injuries do occur. So let's kind of get into that. So first off, what are some of the common injuries that you see in swimmers? Uh, Probably the most common uh, area of the body that we'll see would be, you know, shoulder uh, problems, either in the front part of the uh, back part of the shoulder. Uh, But it's not uncommon to see other issues in the spine, uh, low back, hip, knee and ankle, but typically uh, like shoulder impingement, rotator cuff issues. Um, it, you know, swimming requires repetitive motion through certain uh, joints. And with that repetition co- um, comes overload. And then sometimes even an acute injury or strain that can bring a problem to, to and around the shoulder, uh, just to be specific. Um, so I would say you know, in my experience, 80% of it will be upper extremity, that being shoulder, arm issues. Um, but again, it's not uncommon to see other body parts uh, be injured. Sure. And it's the kind of sport um, where you are doing the same thing over and over and you're doing it every day. <laughs> and so, mm-hmm. uh, you exactly. know, a lot of t- a lot of times your, your, your muscles can be overworked. And um, so what do you think are some of the you know, the methods and and some of the habits that swimmers can get into to try and prevent those overuse injuries? Yep. Uh, I think, you know, preventative wise, I think it's always important in this, this, um, you know, hopefully is taught from a young age through the development uh, of their their athletic career with swimming, but uh, proper uh, stroke technique, um, you know, working with a coach um, or a family member if they're, you know, if they're swimmers themselves to make sure that they're doing things correctly. If you do things in, incorrectly and you do that repetitively, obviously that's going to lead to a problem. So making sure, you know, not only in the water are they uh, uh, training, uh, keeping track of volume, uh, what type of strokes, if maybe keeping, uh, you know, adding variability to the different strokes, even if they primarily are freestyle swimmers to use variety just to keep the body guessing a little bit. So they're not just constantly pounding certain body parts, but making sure that their core muscle structures are balanced. Uh, when I say core, specifically to the shoulder, for example, uh, the rotator cuff and the shoulder blade muscles or the scapular muscles in the back, I'll keep that shoulder um, in alignment through an arc of motion. And so if those, if there's any subtle imbalance in time, there will be breakdown. So I think, you know, pre-season, post-season and in-season training, uh, both in and out of the water, all of those things um, can definitely help in preventing, hopefully, some kind of injury, whether that be acute or an overuse type injury. I think too, though, proper diet, nutrition, sleep, all of those things come into play. And then to also keep in mind that in these younger individuals in the early teens into late teens and adulthood, early adulthood, the body's changing. They're demanding more of their body. They're getting stronger. They're putting more hours on hormonal changes, you know, men versus women, I think all those things can come into play um, when developing injury, whether that be acute or chronic. Right. And yeah, they're developing. Everything is is still growing. Uh, Mm -hmm. And obviously injuries do occur. Um, You would hope that uh, you don't have a situation where uh, a swimmer has to uh, have surgery for any reason. Um, 
but I'm sure as you know the uh, treatment has evolved, there's a lot that can be done without having to resort to that. Exactly. It, you know, as a primary care sports physician, I don't do orthopedic surgery. My job right. is to keep patients away from the surgeons. Right. But, you know, if and when that case comes up, we refer them and we hopefully get them to the right doctor for the right right treatments. Uh, you know, the biggest thing is, is, is with, with athletes in general, uh, you know, staying specific to swimming is that if there is an issue that they uh, address that with coach or family so that it can be addressed in the office. Obviously, coming uh, in to be seen uh, by a sports physician, it would be the great first step. Um, sometimes in, in a pinch, just to pay on the hour a day, going to an urgent care or emergency room for things that seem to be more acute and, you know, pain is a primary issue where the patient's really uncomfortable, then they should go be seen uh, emergently, emergently. But then coming in to see a, a non-operative orthopedic specialist would be ideal. Um, you know, usually we'll get, you know, radiographs or some kind of diagnostic workup, obviously a good uh, sports-specific physical examination. And then usually, uh, initiating some form of physical therapy, again, so that we can have a more hands-on approach, look for any uh, core deficiencies in the, in the joint, whether that be shoulder, back, or, or lower extremity, and then addressing that. Sometimes, you know, we have to get a little more aggressive. We may consider interventional type procedures, injections for both diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. I think we're more aggressive with that based on age and obviously injury, um, you know, different, different you know, pain reliever medications, although not promoted long term, but in the short term to make a patient comfortable so that they can rehab better. But there are a whole slew of modalities that can be done in physical therapy, um, exercises that can be performed at home, at home under the guidance of a family member if the patient's young, or even the weekend warrior who, who swims or competes in triathlons and whatnot. So uh, there are plenty of conservative options before we have to get aggressive. But you know, if and when it comes to, we can do a proper workup so that we know what's going on and we can definitively, you know, correct it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. And it's like injuries, you know, especially for the young athlete, you know, they're devastating, you know, because they, if, especially if they haven't gone through it before. So, you know, instantly they panic. And here's the great thing about the experience that I've had working with the DMC sports medicine and physical therapy pros is that, you know, you guys have, you guys do work such, uh, you know, you have such great teamwork, you know, with the physicians, with the physical therapists, you know, and, and everyone involved that is uh, ready to take your individual case and give you your best options moving forward. So, um, but there are times, especially at this point in the season, uh, where, you know, they they feel like they're injured and, and they really don't understand if it is just a soreness issue or if it's, you know, something more serious. Uh, so when would, you know, for those, you know, who are on the fence, when would you recommend they see a sports medicine professional? You know, it typically is most swimmers, I mean, they've been doing, they've been swimming for a long time um, to, you know, they'll have a good background in athletics and some may be new to the sport and that's totally fine. I, I think the reality is, is that if, if pain seems out of proportion to what is normal pain for you from like, you know, working out muscle soreness, expecting, you know, fatigue or muscle pain for 24 hours. If, if things are extending beyond 24, 48 hours and you feel like it's inhibiting your quality of life in any means where it's in the back of your mind and you're just unsure, I think it's, you gotta trust your gut and there's no harm in being evaluated, even if it's a minor issue that can resolve itself within, within a week or so. You know, honestly, why wait and put yourself through that when you can be assessed and be reassured? I think, you know, that obviously you want to physically feel better, but you also want to men mentally feel confident in, uh, you know, that you're that you're correct about there being an issue versus, you know, a mild non-issue. So to me, I, I've, I've always in my personal experience said to myself, if, if I'm stringing together three, four days of pain and it's just not normal pain, it's not you're not noticing a recovery uh, you know, within 24, 48, 72 hours, then you should probably be seen for it just to be checked. Yeah. And I would imagine there's probably nothing more satisfying to you than be having a young athlete uh, in your office and you saying, hey, 
this is fine. You know, it's not that bad. I, you know, this is just, you know, I'm glad you came to see me, but I can tell you that, uh, you know, this is this is something that we can treat very easily and, and seeing the relief on their face. But when there is an injury, you know, when it is something that is uh, clear, um, I guess a lot of them, you know, and parents out there, especially parents who have athletes, uh, you know, now at the, say, at the high school level, and maybe they were, you know, uh, not as serious before, and maybe they haven't dealt with an injury before, uh, should they go to a sports medicine physician first? I would say, I would say yes. I, I think you definitely, if anything, like I said, you want to be seen by somebody. And if, if too much time passes, uh, I would say, you know, through the DMC in particular, uh, you know, we kind of pride ourselves in, in at least getting a patient in to be seen and, and treated, you know, hopefully within 24 or 48 hours. You shouldn't have to wait any longer than that. But in any case, you know, even touching base with your primary care doctor just for some form of reassurance if there's any kind of delay. But in most cases, really, you should see an, uh, some form of orthopedic or sports medicine specialist. You will find you know, that the non-operative, uh, non-operative physicians, especially if you don't think that you need surgery for the issue, are a great place to start. We, we you know, we, we are well trained in, in musculoskeletal care. We spend a lot of time understanding the conservative uh, side of, of management of injury. So we can provide many different avenues. Um, and again, if, if anything is more serious, we can streamline patients, you know, to the right physician or right treatment, right uh diagnostic test need be without much, if at all, downtime. So most definitely, when in, when in doubt, you should definitely see somebody. I mean, I was, I've been an athlete my whole life. I've had numerous knee surgeries, and I can tell you in my younger years, especially when time was, a, you felt like time was so important, you had aspirations to play, you know, participate in college or whatever. I mean, you, you don't you don't want to sit on something and not say something about it. And I think it's important for for parents to be aware of that. I think for athletes to understand it's okay to say something if you just don't feel like, you know, something's right about your body as far as your performance, anything like that, address those issues. And who better than a, a you know, orthopedic sports medicine specialist to talk to about that? Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, listen up, kids. So, you know, you're probably, you know, thinking about what it is that maybe you want to do with your life. So, you know, you as a, an athlete uh, for most of your life, what, what was it that really drew you uh, to wanting to become a sports medicine physician? Yeah, I, I definitely think my athletic career gave, it led me to uh, becoming a sports physician, orthopedic physician in general. I grew up playing basketball and soccer. I've I've tore both my ACLs. I've, you know, had spinal fusion from an old injury oh, in my wow. neck. And I think those personal experiences definitely, you know, pointed me in that direction. My the one orthopedic surgeon I worked with for years finally convinced me. He's like, I played basketball at Wayne State. So I, you know, had a few knee surgeries there. And the team physician there was like, you know, you have to go into medicine. Like <laughs> you live in the training room, so you might right. as well do it. And you know, I was passionate about it. I mean, I'm passionate about sports. I'm passionate yeah. about exercise and, and, and the health and well-being, whether it's competitive or just for the overall health of the individual. I think it's just so important. Function's important. And, and when your quality of life is, is impacted negatively, it impacts everything about your life. So I think it's really, it's definitely been a passion of mine. And unfortunately, personal experience, you know, led me that way. But I think it makes it makes for a good physician. I've seen many kids come through here that were, you know, my age when they kind of had issues and some of them, I can see them going through the same path and process. So um, you just have to be passionate about it. And, uh, you know, it worked for me. Thank goodness I have a career now in orthopedics. I can relate. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Absolutely. And, you know, exactly. And when they're there, you can say, hey, I've been through this, <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah. you're not alone here in, in this. And uh, I can feel your pain, as it were, and you're going to help them uh, get better. So, uh, well, I appreciate you, Dr. Anderson, for coming on today. We really do. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Okay. Hey, guys, you know, if you have a sports injury, go where the pros go, DMC Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. To make an appointment, call 313-243-7924 or visit dmc.org slash game changers.